Hi everyone, Dr. Campbell here, and in this video, I would like to provide you with an introduction to the 2020 Current Procedural Terminology, or CPT, code set. CPT is copywritten by the American Medical Association, and they maintain this code set. CPT is updated on an annual basis with the new version of the manual being effective every January 1. So this video will focus on the 2020 code set. CPT has actually been around since 1966, and it is a code set that contains five digit codes that identify healthcare services that are being provided by providers across the United States. Uh, in fact, there are also some other countries that are now using the CPT code set as well. Now, as it relates to the CPT manual, one of the things I will tell you is that understanding the manual and what's in it from start to finish will prove to be very beneficial as you go through learning how to actually assign the codes. So in this video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of my 2020 manual. All right, so uh, this is the authentic 2020 manual. And if you turn to the inside cover of the manual, in the upper left-hand corner, the first thing that you're going to notice are the symbols that are used throughout the code manual. Familiarize yourself with the name of the symbol and what they identify. For example, the triangle here, single triangle, is representing a revised code. And since I'm talking about the 2020 code manual, that particular code with that triangle next to it means that that code has been revised for the year 2020. Immediately after that, you see modifiers. Of note, the modifiers that are listed here, 22 through 99, these modifiers are utilized when we're coding for the provider. Likewise, on the opposite side of the same page, we have modifiers that are utilized for hospital outpatient use. If you are preparing to take a national exam, it is very important to know who you are expected to code for on that exam. For example, if you are taking the CPC offered by the AAPC or the CCSP, offered by AHIMA, you're going to be using these modifiers here. If you are taking AHIMA CCS exam, these are the modifiers that you want to be familiar with. Now, also on this same page, we have modifiers that are available when you're coding for the anesthesiologist. And then down here, the bottom right hand corner of the inside cover of the CPT manual, we have what are known as HICPICS level two modifiers. Now, fun fact, CPT is actually part of a two level code system, which is actually called HICPICS and HICPICS stands for Healthcare Common Procedural Coding System. This video, we're gonna focus on level one of HICPICS, which are the CPT codes. In another video, I will focus on level two, which are actually the national codes and they're in their own manual. Some of the HICPICS level two modifiers can also be used with CPT codes and that's why they are included here in the front of our manual. As it relates to the modifiers, now, if you are preparing for a national exam, one of the things that I would recommend that you do is make some modifier flashcards. And what you'll wanna do on the front of the flashcard, you'll wanna write the number and the 
the title of the modifier. And then in Appendix A, which we'll see shortly, you'll find the full definition of a modifier. Highly recommend, if you're going to be taking a national exam, to make some modifier flashcards. All right, when we turn the page, the next thing that you'll see in your 2020 code set are some tabs that you can add on to the pages of your CPT manual. Before you start adding the tabs, you first want to make sure that you go through the entire manual just to know things where things are so that when you start to add the tabs, you put them in the correct place. As it relates to national exams, I highly recommend that you look on the AAPC's website, the AHIMA's website to determine which types of tabs are appropriate for national exams, as well as what you can write in your code book. It's important for you to look up that information so that when you take your exam, you will know what's expected of you. Now, notice I keep saying you, and that's because when I took the exam, the rules that were in place then may not be in place today. So very important for you to have an understanding of what's going to be expected when you take your exam. All right, the next thing that you'll see here, uh, there's some advertisements um, from the AMA as well as about the tabs. They do tell you that they are removable and reusable. And then after that, the next thing that you'll see are place of service codes for professional claims. Now the professional claim form that they actually are talking about here is the CMS 1500 claim form. And on the CMS 1500 claim form in block 24B, we can list one of these two digit place of service codes to identify actually where the service took place. So for example, if you have a patient that's in the office that is there for an office visit, they would use place of service number 11. All right, so those cover carry over. And then after that, what you're going to see are uh, a couple of more pages that uh, kind of tell you who was involved with updating the manual and copyright, things like that. Uh, again, this manual is owned by the AMA. All right, and then after that, the next page I want you to locate, which is Roman numeral 10, is the table of contents. Now, this may be the old school learner in me, but I believe that whenever you are looking at a book that you have not looked at uh, before, it's important for you to know what is contained in that book. So that if you're wondering like, where is this or where of that, the table of contents will actually tell you where those things are. So become familiar with your uh, table of contents. All right, after the table of contents, then you have the introduction to the CPT manual. Uh, here you're going to learn that, of course, the CPT manual uh, contains five digit codes. I talked about that. Um, and other information that's pertinent to the manual itself. So please make sure that you read the entire introduction. Some people may find uh, it beneficial to read the introduction twice. Nonetheless, you want to do what works best for you. But if you are going to be um, effective at CPT coding, you have to know the rules. You have to be able to apply what's contained within this manual. So after the introduction, then you have what's known as the illustrated anatomical and procedural review. And so here, what you actually have are, guys, just a few um, medical terms, prefixes, suffixes, and word roots. Uh, when you're taking a national exam, they may prove to be very beneficial. And then after that, um, you get a list of all of the different 
anatomical and procedural illustrations that are contained within the CPT codebook. And the benefit of these different anatomical and procedural illustrations is that when you're coding a procedure, it's very helpful to actually see the actual body part that the procedure is being performed on. And here's a couple of more different diagrams that you're going to see. After that, um, we have what are known as evaluation and management code tables. And um, here, of note, um, I'm recording this video, it's April 2020, and uh, evaluation and management as we know it today will be changing somewhat for January 1st, 2021, just something to be aware of. All right, after that, so after that, this is where you're going to get into the main portion of the CPT manual. And the CPT manual itself is divided into three categories. Okay, so let's take a look at category number one. So category number one is actually the largest portion of the CPT manual. Now, as I mentioned, all CPT codes have five characters. And in category number one, you're going to see about 7,000 CPT codes. As a reminder, these codes are updated annually. Sometimes codes are added, sometimes codes are deleted, sometimes codes are actually revised. And this update and revision is taken undertaken by the AMA, the American Medical Association. So CPT category one codes are what we use for reporting and reimbursement purposes when we're coding for the provider or when we're coding hospital outpatient services, just to name a few. So category one, the largest portion of the manual is divided into six sections. The first section is called evaluation and management. So let's pan over back to our CPT code manual. And one of the things that you'll notice is that evaluation and management begins with its own little table of contents, sidebar, side note. We do not begin coding in the front of the book. We actually begin in the back um, and we will be ending this video today with looking at that process but I want you to know even though this table of contents is here we do start in the index when we're um, trying to locate our CPT codes so category um, number one has six sections the first section is evaluation and management we have this table of contents here and immediately after the table of contents what you're going to notice is that there are going to be some guidelines. So the guidelines, um, how you can identify them is that they're on the green pages of note. Unlike other code systems, such as ICD-10-CM, the guidelines are not all at the front of the code manual. They're actually spread throughout the manual. So the guidelines, the overall guidelines for a particular section are at the very beginning of that section and they're on the pages in green. So then after that, um, what you're going to see is that once the pages are no longer green, then we actually have the codes themselves. So for example, the first code for evaluation and management are the office and other outpatient services codes, specifically the new patient, and the very first code is 99201. Now, CPT codes are in numerical order in the manual, with the exception of the evaluation and management codes. They come first because before a patient can have some of the other services that are in the CPT manual, they have, ha they have to have um, 
you know, an evaluation and management service first. The other thing that you'll want to note is in the manual, we also have what are known as subsection notes. Remember I said category one has six sections. The first section is evaluation and management, and we have the guidelines in green in front of that section. Within that section, you have these little paragraphs of information, and those are known as subsection notes. The other type of notes that you're going to see in the CPT manual are known as coding tips. So the one thing that I want to make sure is very clear, all of the guidelines throughout the CPT manual are must reading for a national exam. I would not attempt a national exam if I if I didn't take the time to read through the guidelines. Here's a tip. If you are enrolled in a coding program where you're being taught coding, you'll want to read the guidelines for the section that you're working on at that time. So that way you don't have to spend, you know, all of your time trying to read the book from cover to cover, okay? So um, one of the things that you'll notice at the very top of the page, it'll tell you uh, what section you're in. So we're in evaluation and management and this area here is office or other outpatient services. And as I turn the page, notice I now have still evaluation and management, but then I have um, hospital observation. So those are the evaluation and management codes. The second section, of category number one is called anesthesia. These are the codes that we report for our anesthesia provider. So our anesthesiologist, our certified registered nurse anesthetist. Now here, what do we see again? Table of contents. Immediately after that, the pages that are in green and what are those called again? Those are called guidelines. And then immediately after the guidelines, you have your um, the anesthesia code. So in case you're keeping up or you've lost track, I'm actually on page 62 in the 2020 CPT manual. And here are the anesthesia codes. Now you'll notice the codes are in numerical order because the anesthesia codes start with a zero. Again, the reason that the evaluation and management codes are up front, they are the most widely used, and so they have placed them in the front of the manual so that um, we can quickly get to them. All right, the third section of our Category 1 CPT code set represents the largest portion of our CPT codes, and those would be the surgery codes. So again, we start off with a little table of contents followed by the pages in green, which are the, you guessed it, guidelines. Then, because the surgery section has several sub areas and subheadings, you're gonna see, um, another table of contents that separates each of the different uh, body systems. Again, we do not begin the coding process here. We begin the coding process in what is known as the index, which I'll talk about at the end. So here we have um, integumentary system. And from the integumentary system, uh, we go to musculoskeletal. I'm going to get over there shortly. And then we have uh, respiratory. Notice how the numbers are actually climbing. I'm going to get to respiratory shortly. <laughs> Almost there. Respiratory was kind of, or musculoskeletal was kind of long, huh? So respiratory, um, I'm on page 191 in the CPT manual. And um, after respiratory, sharing the 30,000 series, we have our cardiovascular system codes. And remember I said, in front of each um, body system in the surgery section, you're going to see another table of contents. You also are going to see some anatomical diagrams. And one of the things that I recommend that you do 
as you're reviewing the different anatomical diagrams, if you notice that there's a body part that's missing that you really want to add in, it's okay to do that so that it'll be there every time you need to access it. All right, from there, guys, um, cardiovascular is kind of long and complex. But from there, um, we have the digestive system. We have hemic and lymphatic. Um, after that, we have the... Um, urinary system, the male genital system, the female uh, genital system. We also have uh, maternity care and delivery. And then the end of the surgery section, we have nervous, we have eye and ear codes. And then <laughs> the surgery section actually comes to an end. So those are the actual eye codes. So surgery actually started on seven, like 75. And the surgery codes don't end until page 470. The fourth area of the category one codes are the radiology codes. And again, they start off with the table of contents, the guidelines. Remember, the guidelines um, are in green. And then after that, you have the codes themselves. Now, one of the things that I do want to make sure that you remember, in CPT, we have the guidelines that appear in front of the section. We have uh, guidelines that um, appear in like a little paragraph note. Remember, I called these subsection notes. And then we also have what are known as parenthetical notes. And what par parenthetical notes do is provide us with some information that is pertinent to the code um, family that we're looking at at that particular moment. Okay. Um, then after that, the fifth section for um, the category one is pathology and laboratory. Of course, it's going to start off with the table of contents, the guidelines on the green pages. And then after that, we get to the very last section of category one. Um, which is the medicine section. And I like to joke that this is like the garbage can section. And the reason I say that is because whatever they couldn't fit in the other five sections, they put it over here. And once you start learning about that, you'll say, wow, Dr. Campbell was right. It's a bunch of, bunch of stuff over here. I mean, it's like, it's so many different um, options over here, okay? So then, of course, yes, we have the pages in green, which are the um, guidelines for the medicine section. And then we have the codes themselves. And what did I say? We have notes in paragraph format. Those are your guidelines for this particular family of codes. Again, if you've already learned ICD-10-CM or ICD-10-PCS, you probably are thinking, well, the guidelines there are in the front of the book. That's not how it works with CPT. Guidelines are spread throughout the manual. So you have the notes that are in front of that section. You have the parenthetical notes that are, I mean, the, par the subsection notes, which are in a family, in front of a family of notes, of codes. <laughs> and then you also have what are known as parenthetical notes. And let me see if I can find one. Yep, I ran across one. And here is an example of a parenthetical note. So one rule of thumb is when you're looking at uh, some codes, you want to read from where your code begins to where your code ends. Now, the other thing I want to show you is something that I mentioned at the very beginning. Remember I talked about those symbols and how important it was for you to learn them? Well, the symbols are included on the bottom of the pages. So you see revise, new code, and then if I turn over to the page that's next to it, and I happen to be on page 650, um, you'll notice here again that the symbols are listed across here. So if you learn them um, from going over them at the beginning of the inside cover, you'll when you see them in front of a code, so for example, this here, if you forgot, you can say, what does that mean? And if you just go down to the bottom of the page, it says, oh, that means that code can be used for telemedicine. 
All right, so guys, we actually have just gone through all of the parts of category one. Remember, the CPT manual is divided into three categories. Category one is the main portion, the largest portion of the CPT code sets. We have six sections, evaluation and management, anesthesia, surgery, which is the largest portion. We also have radiology, pathology, and then we have medicine. All right, after that, guys, our very next section is called category two. Now, category two codes, they are also five characters, but the big difference with these codes is that they actually end in a letter F. So let's zoom back into our code book. And so here, category two codes, page 755. And again, guys, one of the things that's very important, when you're learning coding, it is critical that you take the time to tour your manual. Because when your instructor is uh, going through different materials, um, we often don't have time to tell you what page we're on every step of the way. So the best way to start your CPT journey is by touring your book. Um, some of you may find it beneficial to tab your book with the tabs up front so that when you're in a class and you're going through the manual, uh, you can actually keep up with what you're talking about. So category two codes are optional codes that are used for performance measurement tracking purposes under a quality of care program that Medicare has called PQRS, which is the Physician Quality Reporting System. So these are optional and typically on national exams, you are um, not gonna be coding these, but you still wanna be you know, aware that they exist. All right, so that's category two. And let's go over and talk about category three. So category three codes, guys, they end in a letter T. And can you guess what the T means? T is for temporary. And um, category three codes um, are used for data collection from the Food and Drug Administration and it's a part of their approval process. Um, and it re really represents what I call the latest and greatest, but they call them um, new and emerging technology. And uh, let's take a look at them in the CPT book. Um, the informational part of category three starts on page 776. And then the codes themselves um, are actually um, on the same page um, on 776. All right, after that, after category three, you come to what's known as known as the appendices. And there are several um, appendix in our CPT code set. And um, it's actually like appendix A through P. And the appendices can be helpful during the coding process. So it's very important, and I'm not gonna go through all of them here with you today. Uh, it's very important that you review them, but I did wanna spend a little time talking about Appendix A. So earlier, I mentioned uh, the importance of making modifier flashcards, um, especially if you're taking a coding exam. Uh, one of the things that new coders often say, well, how do I know when to use a modifier? You know when to use a modifier by knowing that they exist. That's half the battle. That's not the total, you know, total thing you got to do. It's with practice. But if you know that it exists, you know what it means, you know what the rules are, it's a lot easier. So earlier when I said, you know, make a flashcard where you put the number and title on the front, 
Here's the definition that you want to put on the back. Of note, I personally, with my medical uh, modifier flashcards, I probably would not write the entire description unless I needed to. And the very first thing that you probably want to do is just read through them. Of note, I do have another video on the, uh, the YouTube channel that focuses on the modifiers only if you want to take a listen to that before you start to make your flashcards. All right, then after Appendix A, oh, and remember I mentioned that there were a few selected HICPIX level 2 modifiers included for use in CPT. Um, there is uh, the list here, the complete list here. Uh, again, in another video, I will introduce you to HICPIX. Okay, so then after that, guys, we get um, a list of all of the additions, deletions, and revision for this version of CPT. And which version is this? This is CPT 2020. The manual is updated every January 1. And so this shows you what's new for this manual or revised or what has been deleted. And sometimes, guys, it could be that they just took out um, a few words and notice those codes have a revised triangle in front of them. Or they could have just deleted the whole code altogether, like what they did with 64410. See, they drew a line through it. That means that code is no longer in this version of the manual. All right, so then after that, again, it's Appendix A through P. Um, you'll want to take a look at those. And then I want to spend the rest of this um, video talking about the index. So the index is where the coding process begins after you've read a scenario. You've read your scenario and it's time to um, look up a CPT code. This is where you will actually begin. So a couple of things. Number one, um, on page 897, there are some instructions for use of the CPT manual, and so critical that you review them. Um, of importance is what main term do I use to locate a procedure? If you've learned ICD-10-CM, one of the things that you're going to learn about CPT is that we have more flexibility in terms of what main terms we can use. We can use a procedure or service. We, a main term can be an organ or other anatomical site. It can be a condition. It could be a synonym, an eponym, or abbreviation. So we really have lots of flexibility in terms of what we can use as the main term. Of note, there is no cheat sheet on which main terms actually work. Um, you learn which main terms actually work with practice, okay? Um, and then there's some other information on modifying terms as well as code ranges and conventions. Again, I encourage you to spend some time getting to know your manual because it will really help your journey go smoother in a class if you take the time to get to know your manual. Because in a class, and as an educator myself, I can tell you in a class, I can't go over every word on every page and every paragraph. And so the um, process of getting to know your manual really is the responsibility of the student so that the, when the instructor is guiding you through the process, you actually know um, what you're looking at. So take some time, again, to review the instructions and use of the CPT index. So um, I want to talk about uh, just some very basic examples of looking up uh, a CPT code and, and exploring the index just a little bit more detail. So in the index, you'll notice that there are some words in blue. Those words are known as main terms. Um, remember, CPT says we have four different ways we can look up a main term. Condition, procedure or service, 
anatomic site, synonym, eponyms, and abbreviations. So for example, the body part breast, that could start, you could start off with breast as your main term, and then you just have to go and search for a subterm that reflects what your doctor did. Did he do an ablation or an abscess or an aspiration or a biopsy? So the way that this manual works, let's say our patient had a incision and drainage of an abscess on the breast. So breast, abscess, incision and drainage. The code that the index gives us is 19020. And the next step is for us to go look up 19020. So again, this is where those tabs are going to be very beneficial. And um, when we get over to 19020, we'll want to read our, our full description of that code to see what it says. So the other thing, oh, something that's important to know. The words in the index may not be verbatim what you see here. So for example, it says here for code 19020, it says mast otomy, mast otomy. Well, mast means breast. One of the things I would encourage you to do, whenever you see a word that you don't know the meaning of, you want to look it up. Guys, when you're in a class and your instructor is trying to teach you coding, they cannot be a human dictionary for you. It's 2020. We have the internet. Any word that you don't know what it means, you can actually look it up and um, learn more about it. So this says mastotomy with exploration or drainage of an abscess deep. So rule of thumb, read from where your code begins to where your code ends. Now, while we're here, let me uh, kind of point out a couple of more things. Remember I talked about types of notes, parenthetical notes. Um, remember I talked about different paragraphs that are in front of a code. So these notes here don't apply to these codes here they actually apply to the breast biopsy codes, which are actually on, um, on the next page here. See those here. So um, the other thing I wanted you to notice, did you notice here where it says CPT assistant? CPT assistant is a reference that the uh, AMA um, publishes. And uh, you have to have a subscription to it, so it's not free. But what CPT Assistant does is provide you with some clarification on the use of that code. So um, if you're taking a coding exam like the CPC, you just need to know what it is. So it's published by the AMA. It's used as an additional reference, but it, there is a cost associated with it. Um, so you're not expected to purchase it. All right, um, the other thing that I wanted to uh, make you aware of, and this is something that's pretty tricky, so I want you to um, really pay close attention. This is very, very important. And when you read the instructions to the index, um, this will be covered there, but I wanted to cover it here um, just as a, a great place to end this video. So the CPT system uses a format that's called a standalone code and an indented code. So on this example here, 19100, which is on page 106, is a standalone code. How do I know? Because standalone codes are not indented and they begin with a capital letter. Indented codes are indented over to the right. And let me get, let's see if I can find a, a piece of paper to sh show this. Notice how, make sure it's lined up. Biopsy here starts with a B, it's capital. That's a standalone code. Notice how open is indented over and it's lowercase. So 
the AMA uses this format because both of these codes are related to biopsy of the breast. The difference is 19100 is biopsy of the breast with a percutaneous needle core. 19101 is still a biopsy of the breast, but it's open incisional. So you may be asking, do I need to report both codes? No, this is a biopsy of the breast, percutaneous needle core. This is a biopsy of the breast, open incisional. So this is how we read indented codes. Whenever a code is indented, you want to go to where the standalone code is, which is here, and you read the description of the standalone code up to the semicolon. And again, this is covered in the instructions to the index. So you read to where the semicolon is, so it's a biopsy of the breast, and then you drop down, open incisional. You don't report both codes. And what the AMA um, is doing this for is to save printing space, okay? So I'm gonna show you another example because I think that that is um, a tricky concept to, to grasp. And so um, I, I like to show a couple of examples. Now, the other thing that you probably noticed that there were some things in my book that um, were actually highlighted. And the reason that they were highlighted is um, I found that for me, if I highlight those two different procedures, I'll understand the difference between them. And that's not a concept that I actually came up with on myself. <laughs> um, I actually learned to do that um, through a organization, um, they're called CCO, and they have a YouTube video called Bubbling, CPT Bubbling, and it's the BHAT technique. Now, I often recommend, actually, I always recommend that students take a look at that concept, see if it's something that you want to do to your manual. Um, but before you do it, you want to see if it's going to work best for you. For some people, it does. For some people, it does not. Okay, so we're talking about the standalone and the indented code. So what I want to do is I'm going to put a box around these codes right here. Okay, so this is a radical resection of a tumor. And code 27645, it's a standalone code. How do I know? Capital letters. Whereas 27646, 27647 are indented codes. And when you have an indented code, you read the description of the standalone code up to the semicolon. At the semicolon, you stop and you drop down to get the rest of your code. So 27645 is a resection of a radical uh, tumor of the tibia. 27646, radical resection of a tumor, but it's of the fibula. 27647, radical resection of a tumor, but it's the talus or the calicanus. So instead of the AMA repeating this sentence over and over again, they use the standalone and the indented format. All right, I always say um, third time is the charm. So let's find another example um, because I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person that if I hear it a couple of times and I sit down and, you know, do my reading, it actually uh, will click in my mind. Okay, so here I'm on page 271. And on 271, I have code 36560 and 36561. Those two codes go together because the code underneath it, and let's see if I can bring that up, um, 36563 
is not indented. So these two codes go together. And again, highly recommend that you search on YouTube for a video called CPT bubbling um, because you'll find that that may be a technique that will work for you. So remember, whenever you have an indented code, you want to go to the standalone code and you want to read the description up to the semicolon. So if you were to at, be asked, what's the full description of 36561, you would say insertion of a tunnelly centrally inserted central venous access device with subcutaneous port stop because there's a semicolon age five or older so what's the difference between these two codes the standalone code is younger than five years of age three six five six one is for age five years or older. So if you are ever asked, what's the full description of a code? If you have a code that is indented, just remember, you're not using both codes, but you need to read the description of the standalone code up to the semicolon. All right, guys. Well, this has been uh, Dr. Campbell. It has been my pleasure to walk you through the CPT manual. And we do have more YouTube videos on our channel um, at Dr. Campbell's Coding and CDI Corner. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. You can check out our website. And we are an AAPC approved educational provider, and we have classes that start every other month. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.